Hi guys. Okay. Today for the old silver wolves, let's talk about walking sticks. Walking sticks are a great addition to us. Now, those of you that may remember in some of your earlier education, there was the riddle of the sphinx. And the riddle of the sphinx was what walks on four legs at dawn, two legs at noon, and three legs at sundown. Man, because we crawled on all fours. When we were grown, we walked on two legs. When we got to be old, we walked on three legs. And that was the riddle of the sphinx. But having a walking stick helps a lot in our stability. And it has other uses, especially if you're in thick woods like I live in. So let's first talk about the type of stick, and then we'll talk about uses of the stick. Okay? Now for you ultra modern guys, there are these super light hiking poles. Now this one is not telescopic, this is a fixed solid. And they make them that has got the pressure and you collapse and etc. And they do work to a point, but they have little or no sideways strength. Okay? So if you walk with it, work straight up and down, and you're walking with it like this to aid you in hiking, yes, it works. It also gives you a lot of stability when you're on very uneven ground to be able to broadly stick out and balance yourself as you're coming down steep, uneven, stepping over tree roots, etc. But it has little or no sideways strength. I can put this over my knee and just kink it and bust it in half. And once it's kinked, it's gone. You can't straighten it out. So very, very light, weighs nothing, and it would be a great hiking staff. And if that's what you just want, just a little bit of stability, and everything this is great also and by you using especially a pair of them you take up to a third of your body weight on it as you walk well that takes a lot of more load off of your legs and your ankles and your feet so do you guys that have ankle problems knee problems etc walking with a pair of sticks may greatly improve your ability to walk because you can actually your arm will naturally put a little pressure down and that takes a little bit of weight off of you 25 30 pounds whatever it is and that helps now I prefer a natural stick now this one this one is a staff that I cut years ago and this is ironwood if you'll look at it, it looks like a knotted up muscle I cut this on Grouch's land on Pigeon Creek dogwood holler many many years ago and it was growing in this configuration and I got there at a joint and cut it off to make a nice wide foot on it okay ironwood is known for its strength so it does have a lot of side to side pry pressure it is far superior to hickory why don't we use it for hickory handles and stuff because all them gnarly grains in there that I said look like a tightened up muscle grains go in every direction this stuff and you're trying to make a nice flat axe handle it'll never work it'll be stuff sticking out in every direction as long as you leave it in something like this It'll last the rest of your lifetime. Rock solid. This thing is 25 years old. I've used it as a pry bar more times than I can count where you stick it underneath and pry up. They just are tough. And yet it's not that heavy. This thing's probably like two pounds, something like that. But I can, I can really rest my weight on it. Now let's talk about the job of such a stick. How big do you want the stick? Well, I want the sticks that whenever I put it on the ground, I want it almost chin level to me so I can put my hands like that if I want to prop. It means that when I stick it away from me and I lean against it for whatever reason, it's about right for the center of my chest to the ground. You can make taller or longer. It needs to fit your body. How big a diameter around? I like it like that where you close your fingertips. That's the size I want Okay, up here at the top. Now, at the bottom end, at, besides that flare, it's only about that big around. See, so I got a weight savings there. But I do like the end to be something like where it was a joint of a limb or something like it because that grain goes together and it makes a tougher end. You may want to end cap this. If it's a straight piece right there, put you a pipe cap or something on there to keep it from splitting out when you're banging on it. Whatever you want, okay? Now, the uses of this stick. Are just as a walking companion, as a prop, whenever I'm needing to shoot, all I gotta do is spread my legs out a little bit, 
and kind of sit down and put this out there and I got a rock solid place to prop a gun on top of to shoot out there. If I'm up against a vertical tree, I can put it at this angle and make a V right here to lay the gun in, etc. It's a quick support. You want the top rounded over so there's no sharp edges. Okay. I can put a uh, diamond shelter up and take my stick and push up in the middle of it because this isn't sharp. It's not going to wear a hole in the tarp and stand it up to hold the roof up nice high and tight, right? And still have quick access to get it and come out with it when I'm getting out of camp in a hurry for whatever reason. I can use this as a quarter staff for self-defense to be able to job hard at something to get it away from me or etc to swing down. I can also use this against snakes. Do not do this to hit a snake. You're going to miss. If there's a snake there and for whatever reason you need to move out of it, take it and use it like a hockey stick. Put it down and sling the snake. Hook him in the middle and kind of throw him away from you. If you're going to kill him, go about that far up from his tail, hit him in the back and break his spine. Whap! He'll go into theatrics. If you're going to eat him, when he gets done with his theatrics, pin the head down. He may or may not be truly dead, but he's in shock because you broke his back. Cut the head off. Bury the head. Do not play with the head. If it's a venomous snake, it can strike, even though there's no body attached because the nerves and muscles, even after it's been dead for hours, those fangs can spring out because it's a type of nerve action, okay? Their systems are so slow and so glacial in function that sometimes they can do that. So don't play with the head, okay? Now, crossing a stream or something, being able to take and feel in front of me to make sure there ain't a deep hole going up and down a bank, being able to anchor this solid and have a push-off point to go upstream or to come down off the bank into water, making sure the bottom's good and then holding against it like this. Maybe I talked about going up against my chest, putting my hand here and putting my other hand on top and kind of leaning my chest and stepping down into it, letting this be like the slow ease down in and out. Same way coming upstream. Being able to take this and go up and hook it between two um, bushes or something and grab a hold of this and help pull myself up. See, there's a thousand and one uses for a stick. It was the first tool, the first weapon we ever had. And a man that knows how to use a staff is pretty formidable up close of the things he can do. I've seen hogs killed with a stick like this. I've seen mean, uh, just vicious as all get out dogs taken apart by a little man that knew what to do with a stick. Now you go look in martial arts and stuff, there's entire katras and everything set up for the bow, B-O, which means a, sta a fighting staff. We talked about, you know, in the story about uh, Robin Hood, about him fighting Little John with a quarter staff, which was a walking stick. So it goes back as early and as primitive as you can go. There is nothing more authentic for an outdoor accoutrement than a walking stick. Now, names, you're going to hear them calling, called hiking staffs, walking sticks, Moses sticks. There's all kinds of names, but they're all talking about something like this. There is no true pattern. It's what you like. Now, if you want to go with the modern, these are very light, weigh nothing, and they're good for straight up and down, hiking. Remember, it has no side-to-side -side strength at all. So if you fall against it, it's just going to throw in half. If you just bend it around over your knee and bend it. You ain't doing that with this. But this is at least double or triple the weight of this. So that's a consideration. If you're trying to make time on relatively flat ground, a pair of these is a better way to go. If you're trying to use it in the woods, this, to me, is a better way to go. Another usage, again, talking about snakes and stuff like that. When I'm walking in that brushy stuff in there and I can't see around my feet because it's just too overgrown, I like to carry this. What I do is I put the big end up here and I hook my arm on it. And I do this and swing it in front of me, hitting the bushes as I move forward. Why? If there is a snake there. 
usually, in my experience, the operating uh, of most of your snakes are they come out in the morning, they get out in the sun, they warm up, and then they go find them a nice shady place because they don't do good. They overheat in our summer heat. So they want to get up under that log, under that bush, in that shady place, and they coil up in their striking coil, and they basically go to sleep. And they're hoping a bunny rabbit, a chipmunk, or something, or a bird, will get within range. They're not a chase-it-down predator. They're an ambush predator. So that whenever the bird, the chipmunk, or whatever lands right in front of it, they're ready to strike. Bam! And they got a quick meal, right? Well, here it is asleep up under that bush, and you can't see it for all these bushes, and you come walking up, and you step right in front of it. And you either step on it, or you wake it up. By me doing this in front of me, I wake them up. They're usually less aggressive that way, believe it or not. Because if you startle them, they're out of instinct, they're going to bite. But if you do this, you make the leaves move around, you can see the snake quicker and easier. You know, like I said, I'm moving slowly and I'm doing this. Well, that sticking out from me is a good six, eight feet. And I'm doing that, and I'm just stirring it up and looking as I'm going, and go, whoop, there's one, and I just back up. If he decides to come out, I can take this and hook him, sling him that way, away from me. Nine times out of ten, that's 99% of all of it, and you're going to have no problems after that. If I have to defend myself with it, I can. Again, I'm going to try to scoop him and throw him. If that don't work, I'm going to go whop and hit him and break his back and then take care of it for lunch. It's just what you need to do. But one of these sticks makes a difference. Plus being able to, whenever you get to where you're going, I can take the strap of my haversack and just make a lark's head loop and put it over the top of this and hook it and lean it up against a tree and it'll hang my haversack right there easy and quick, ready to go. All on a stick. And you can go out and find these and cut them yourself. Now, I like ironwood. But any kind of old stick will work. It'll just vary on how strong. Hickory is another great one to use. Um, but I like to cut them in the fall and let them dry over the winter before I use it in the spring. By then, it's pretty much dry and it's okay. It won't bend and take a set. I like to take it and put it on something flat, like on a corner of the garage floor or something and roll it around every couple of days so it don't get a bow so much to it you can see this one's got a little bit of a bow well that's where the tree was when I cut this it, it's got a, a, a snake roll to it but it straight up and down it actually does kind of line up straight up and down the curl keeps going so to speak so this has been mine for God knows how many years and it's been used a million times in a million different ways you don't see it a lot in my videos because normally whenever I'm carrying this, we're going into that stuff and I'm not toting the camera. I'm toting a gun on the hip and toting this, usually. But if it's one of them things where it's some place where you can't tote a gun and there might be snakes, I'm going to be toting this with me. Hope you enjoyed this content, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe for me before you go to feed the algorithm. Until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.